Welcome to the Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass, lesson number four, a slow and steady way to paint your acrylic portrait. A slow and steady way to paint your acrylic portrait. Contrary to popular belief, not everything that's done quickly is done well. We don't have to have everything done fast, even though in our world with social media, you know, we're used to quick videos and quick tutorials, and that's good. They have their place for learning little bits that we need to to accomplish tasks quickly. Um, but in painting an acrylic portrait that you really want to be proud of, that you um, know is realistic and um, basically shows the talent that you know that you have to other people um, and encourages the people around you, that does take some time. It takes time to do things well. And that's what I want to teach you here in the class today. So if you've heard of the story of the hare and the tortoise, and I think pretty much everyone has, that, that story where you know the hare ends up running really quickly and then he takes a nap, but the tortoise just plods along a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and he ends up finishing the race. Not, not the hare, not the rabbit. Um, that's how we do it here with this painting. We just take one step at a time. We just put down one layer here, one layer there, and before you know it, you step back and you're like, man, oh man, this is a really nice looking painting. Well, I want to teach you that step-by-step -step process here using the acrylic glazing technique. And I'm excited. I'm excited you're taking this challenge with me um, and over 1,300 artists all over the world. Um, and we're going to have a fun, fun time, fantastic time today, painting this portrait together, um, just making progress on this. But before I, I get ahead of myself here, I'd like to encourage you to take the portrait painting challenge. Um, you can sign up at realisticacrylic.com backslash spring dash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. When you sign up, I'll send you the welcome kit that includes the reference photo with the grid overlay. You can print that off and get exact proportions on your sketch. Um, it also includes the masterclass lessons sent to you, um, the palette layout guide so you know how to arrange your palettes for optimal color mixing and keeping your colors from getting muddy. And then you also get the supplies list and you'll have everything you need, paints, brushes, canvas, my recommendations on what to use to get the best results. Um, kind of a shopping list that you can use uh, so you can paint this portrait with us. So go ahead and sign up at realisticacrylic.com. Would love to have you take part in the challenge. It's not too late and it is free, completely free to sign up and I'll be showing you step by step how to paint this portrait with us. So uh, before I begin the painting process, let me just ask a word of blessing upon you. And I want to just invite God here, the master artist, uh, to help me to teach you and to help you to paint a portrait you can be proud of. So Father, I do ask a blessing here on this class. Um, I pray for uh, the people watching, the students watching, that you would bless them, you'd encourage them, just to let them know they can do this, Lord. That if they have the desire to paint, they wouldn't be watching this video if they didn't have the desire to paint a portrait. That because you have put that desire in them, you also supply the teaching that they need to do it well. And I believe through my teaching here that they'll have what they need to do it. But Lord, that you would also supply the encouragement. You'd supply the inspiration. You would supply the materials that they need. You'd supply the time that they need to paint, the place that they can paint. So Lord, put all of those things into place. Bless the students watching, Lord. I believe that you will really help them to paint beautiful portraits. And I know uh, so many of the people in our group use their talents to encourage others, um, to bless others. And this is what it's all about, Lord. So um, bless this class today, provide for people, keep them healthy and strong, heal any sicknesses in their bodies and uh, draw them close to you. I ask in Jesus name. Amen. All right. You still with me? Let's get into the painting process. Um, I've got the canvas here basically um, at a stage of having applied uh, one glaze. That's what we did in our last class uh, with raw umber dark and ultramarine blue and matte medium to thin it out. So this is where we're at right now. Um, if you went a little too dark, by the way, I want to encourage you. It's okay. It's okay, the glazing technique does take a little time getting used to taking a lighter approach, a more translucent approach. 
And if by chance your, your paint got a little heavy handed, your mixture was a little too opaque, um, you have streakiness on it or anything that you look at and you're kind of unsure about, don't worry, we're gonna fix it. There's so many opportunities with this technique because we go a little bit at a time that you can keep on adding layers to kind of guide your painting towards that desired end. Just like steering a car over the road, if it veers off a little bit into the left lane, you can easily bring it right back, okay? And I'll show you how to do that. Um, but in this stage here, this is where we're at. So we have the painting with that one glaze and we're just wanting to add more color to it, more values. Now, most important at this stage is to really dial in the value structure. Um, we're gonna add a little bit of color at a time, but we're not so concerned about mixing a certain skin tone because we do this in stages and layers. Um, we go very, very translucently, mixing a tiny bit of, of pigment into a large amount of acrylic matte medium. And you do want to use that acrylic matte medium, not gloss medium, not glazing medium, or any other kind of mediums. It should be matte medium for the best results. Just think matte medium like my name. <laughs> and that will really help you to apply the paint well, and it won't be sticky, it won't be messy. Um, so I just put matte medium in the center of the palette. And again, I have my colors arranged here with raw or dark, burnt sienna, raw sienna, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson. Uh, you could have uh, naphthal crimson, but it's, it's optional. Uh, organic orange, I call it organic red orange or organic pyro red orange. Indian yellow and titanium white. Um, so what I want to do is start off with my large flat brush. So this is a, I believe, a, a one or three quarter. And you could also use a one inch, but I'm going to go with this one that's in a little better condition. And I want to darken the background, um, get a little more isolation in uh, between these colors here. So let's, uh, let's add a glaze of mostly ultramarine blue. I like to dip my brush into just a little bit of matte medium. Just a little bit of matte medium. And I'm going to then add a little bit of ultramarine blue to the brush. You can see how that works here. So we just saturate that into the bristles and I only mix this ultramarine blue into a corner of the matte medium. Notice I'm not mixing it into the whole pile. I don't wanna muddy this up. I want to preserve some clear matte medium and control the amount that's on my palette, that's on my brush, I mean. And so I'm going to take ultramarine blue and let's add just the tiniest bit of raw umber dark and we just dip a little bit on the corner. Let me show you here. Just a little bit on the corner, if you can see that. It's just on the corner of the brush. Just on that tip there. So you can see it's a little darker. So just a little bit of ultramarine blue, or sorry, raw umber dark rather. A little bit of raw umber dark. And I just wipe it off here on the palette next to the ultramarine blue. So again, I just wipe it off here. Now I have the two colors kind of side by side and I mix them together and I control the amount of raw or dark going into the ultramarine blue by pulling just a little bit away from this area that I dabbed off. And now I'm making a mixture that's mostly ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw or dark. So about 75% ultramarine blue, 25% raw or dark. Now we add some matte medium into this whole thing and I just pull that right up. See, I just pull it right up into this area that I mixed. I'm dragging it, kind of scooping it almost, pulling it up in there and making a mixture that's kind of a bluish gray. All right, so it's just toning it down a little bit. I got my white card here. That's what I call it, just a piece of white paper. I can just test out my glaze. So you can see what we have. It's just kind of a, 
just kind of a bluish gray color there. Okay, and now we're going to apply it. So what I want to do is go to these darker areas on the canvas. I look at the reference photo and I look at the background and I say, where is it darker? Well, it's darker in the lower left corner and in the upper right corner. And also on the whole right hand side. It is lighter just in this upper left corner if you look at your reference photo. So we don't want to put the glaze there. We're trying to prioritize value, <clears throat> that is the tonal range from light to dark, more than color. Value is more important than color. Okay, so let's apply this. Let's cut up around the edge of her arm at this stage. And you want to always keep a wet edge as you're brushing. Okay, so I'm going in several different directions. Flip your brush over to get some of the paint that's on the other side off of your brush. Use that corner of your, your brush to cut up just to the edge of the clothing. If you go over the line, that's not a big deal. I'd rather you go all the way up to the edge and overlap it than not go up to the edge. Now you do have to brush quickly. See how I'm using pressure here? to keep it from drying and getting that kind of mottled look using a lot of pressure. I have the brush very, very perpendicular to the canvas, not parallel. I'm using a lot of pressure at this point to really keep that nice soft look. Oh, I overlapped it a little bit. Not a big deal. I can just wipe it off. Now I bring the brush, the glaze up only about this far. All right. Just only about this far. Uh, to a little below the shoulder line and there's a reason for that now let's <clears throat> take this same glaze and let's go to the upper right corner and work our way down from there and you might have to mix a little bit more if you run out which I'm gonna do right now but it's gonna be that same same kind of mixture All right, so same kind of mixture here. And we're going to add this glaze to the top. And we're going to cut up around her hair. And again, keep that wet edge. We're going with vertical strokes initially, but you can vary them up a little bit, then go diagonally, smooth them out. Let's bring this all the way to about this far, not quite to the edge of her head maybe, just a little bit away from the edge, two thirds of the way over, maybe lined up with her eye. Okay, and we're again, we're keeping the paint wet by brushing it several times. And it does dry pretty quickly depending on your environment. I have wood heat going, so this dries a little faster than I'd like, but it's okay. Okay, I have a little spotchiness there, no big deal. Many, many layers going into this and it will, will have many opportunities to smooth it all out. So we're just gonna cut up along the edge and let's just paint this whole section. Yeah, let's just paint this whole section all the way down here. All right, so I'm just going to leave that there. I cut up along the edge of the hair. I did not overlap over the hair. That's important. But again, in using this color here, this cooler color, it's going to really set us up to get that kind of greenish gray in the background that we see in the reference photo. Um, and I can add just a little bit of the glaze here as well. Um, on the darker values of her hair. So let's let's do that. Let's not waste this paint. Let's integrate this value structure into everything. I'm going to grab this little flat edge brush. Okay, this is like a little smaller than a half inch. I think it's maybe a three eighths inch. Let's use the same same mixture here. So this kind of uh, ultramarine blue raw or dark glaze. And let's block in some uh, some of the color for her hair. I should say the value structure for her hair. Now I'm going to start here in the upper left corner. 
Again, your color should be kind of a bluish gray mixture. And you want to make sure that you put these glazes where I show you to put them. Um, and, and that'll really help. But don't worry, don't, don't stress. If you do put them in a slightly different area, it, it's no big deal. It's just, I, I'd like to save you a little bit of extra work, a little extra time. And I want you to feel good about what you're painting. So I'm applying these glazes using this small flat edge brush, kind of flowing in the direction of the hair. And again, when you're applying these glazes and you're mixing them, you're looking for a ratio of 95% medium to 5% paint. So go much lighter than you think you need to. Much lighter. Again, follow this guide here, this white card, to see what your glaze should look like before you apply it. It should be very, very light, very translucent. And that'll make it much easier for you. Um, so I'm just putting these little um, glazes in the areas on her hair that are very dark in value. I'm not putting them in the lighter areas, not in these highlights. We don't want it there. Don't want it in any of these lighter areas, but only in the areas that already have a glaze on them. And if your initial glaze got a bit darker than you would have liked, you can selectively apply the glaze just to the darker spots within those areas. All right, so we wanna have some darker areas within the darker areas. So for example, right here, I'm not gonna apply this glaze over this whole section, but I am gonna apply it just on the corner of it. Okay, because when I look at the reference photo, the value of this section is just a bit darker. Now, I'm going to also apply this glaze a little bit under her ear, because that's important. I'm going to also apply it on her face as well. And you can use the same brush. You could switch to a round if you wanted to. Um, if you do use a flat, you have to use just the corner of the brush. Okay, so you're going to hold it at an angle where not the whole brush is making contact with the surface, but just a little bit. So you want to hold that brush, not like this, but like this. See how I have it tipped back? And that way, just the corner, just the corner of that brush, the pointed end is making contact. And that gives me the ability to cut in, just like when you're painting a house, you know, you have the cutting in brush and you cut in around your woodwork and trim same thing with this you're just cutting around that edge and we can add this glaze just to these darker values within the eyebrow so not over the whole thing just over this little bit on the corner see and we're going to also add that in just on this little part of her eyebrow right there and then we're going to darken these little areas around her eye so, and I'm just kind of hitting the edge. Notice I'm not painting in the whole eye, but I'm selectively painting around the perimeter of the eye to build up some depth because the iris typically is darker on the edges and not on the interior. But I will add a little bit of a dab to the pupil. All right, so each opportunity, you want to get away from the thinking of, okay, I'm going to paint her eyes now and I'm going to paint them in completely, or, oh, I'm going to paint in her nose now. I'm going to paint in her lips now. No, that in this technique, we just do it incrementally a little bit at a time when we're going over the whole canvas. So using the same approach of using the corner of the brush, I'm going to just add in a little bit here for her lips, under her lips, inside the nostrils, just a dab, don't want to overdo that so just very very lightly graze across the canvas this allows us to get an integrated value structure okay so the whole painting then has a similar uh, structure value wise and you don't have 
you know, just dark areas in her hair that aren't reiterated by dark areas in her clothing or dark areas of value um, in the background that aren't reiterated by dark values in her face. This is what we call a value key, and that's having all of your values in harmony with each other and doing the glazing technique and working every area of your painting incrementally allows you to have a really integrated value key. I'm going to add a little glaze just to the bottom of her uh, cheeks and blending into her neck. I'm going to flip the brush over just to get a little more glaze on there. I'll put a little bit of a glaze on her ear and then we'll finish up by putting a glaze on her lower area of her hair. So the same color, we're just sticking with this same mixture, the same glaze. And we're just applying that to the darker areas within her hair, getting some separation in value, some contrast between her hair and her back, which is super important. At this stage, we're most interested in getting that contrast in values and creating that form, that depth right away. And I can add just a little bit of this glaze to the outside edge of her hair, just by blending it ever so slightly there. I'll add a little bit right up there too. All right, and I think that uh, is good for this stage. I, I'm going to add a little bit of a glaze as well to her clothing. Right now I'm going to mist my palette to keep it nice and wet, keep these paints from drying out. I use a Flarisol sprayer. One of my students sent this to me as a gift. I never heard of it. And she sent this to me. God bless her for that. Um, but it sprays so nicely. Just a few pumps and it keeps on spraying a super, super fine mist. And it'll keep your paints nice and moist, keep them from drying out. So every 15 minutes or so, you're going to want to spray your palette, depending on your hum humidity where you live. Okay, let's, uh, let's add a little glaze then, which we're going to add a bit more raw or dark to the mixture. So now it's going to be more of a 50-50 Raw or dark ultramarine blue mix. Uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like here on my white card. You can see it next to the other color, how that is not nearly as blue. Okay, you can see that difference there. And we're going to just add some little glazes here into the lace. So we want to get those darker values. Um, within the lace and we want to really pay attention to the areas that should be darker versus lighter. So uh, right down here, this is a darker spot and I'm looking at my reference photo. I'm judging the values by what I see and I'm observing and you really want to observe your reference photo constantly. Always refer back to it, have it as close as you can. I've got mine on my Kindle here right next to my painting. If you print out a photo then tape it next to your painting, tape it on your painting with low tack painter's tape, but have that reference photo right by your canvas and always be looking at it. And so what we're going to do then is just selectively go over some of the areas that look like they are darker within the uh, reference photo. And I'm just going to continue to apply these right here and here. Um, so some of the areas are not getting this glaze right here. I'm not applying a glaze because that area should be lighter in value. So I'm not going to apply a glaze right there. I will apply it, however, right up here get a little differentiation there in the values. You see, so instead of just filling everything in evenly, and just going over that same area again and again to the same degree, um, selectively adding layers in certain spots. And that develops differentiation and value. 
But again, I'm basing it off of what I see in the reference photo. So I'm looking and saying what areas are lighter, what areas are darker. The areas that are lighter, I'm not going to add a glaze this time. I'm going to skip that for, for this particular layer. And I'm just going to do the spots that should be darker. Um, so for example, I'm not going to put a glaze on this right side of her clothing. Um, because when I look at the reference photo, that is lighter in value. The fabric is folded on top of itself. Whereas here you're seeing through the tool fabric to her skin beneath. Um, so I'm just going to leave this vacant for now. I will, however, add a little bit of a glaze right underneath her arm area. So I will do that. And that's good. Uh, that's good. All right. Now that we have the value structure a little more identified here on the painting. All right. Now in this step, let's uh, dive into some actual color. Let's put some color. We're going to establish the mid-tones in the painting. Now that we have the value structure in place, uh, for the most part, we have our major contrasted areas um, identified and delineated um, on the canvas. It's time to put in some color for the mid-tones. So uh, what I want to do is work next on her face and then also her hair and get some separation between the white color of her clothing and the skin tones of her face and then uh, contrast between uh, the skin tones of her face and then her hair. So I'm going to take some fresh matte medium and just drizzle this onto my palette right over the old, right on the edge of it. And I'm going to take, let's see, I think we can use the larger brush. Let's use this. Let's use the uh, flat brush, this three quarter inch flat. Rinse it off in your container. I like to have a rinsing container like this. It's very large and a towel underneath it so I can rinse it really well and wipe the paint off of my brush really well onto that towel, you know, and do it a couple of times. Repeat the process. And, and really rinse off that brush super well, get it super dry. I like to have a little cloth or cotton towel in my pocket, and I just keep that next to me so I can wipe off the brush, make sure that's nice and dry, because you don't want that water dripping into your glaze. That, that'll be really frustrating to have that getting all over your uh, painting. So get that uh, brush clean and nice and dry. And then we're going to take some raw sienna. And I think maybe just a tiny, tiny amount of burnt sienna. So we're going to take primarily raw sienna. And this is what I do. I just wipe it off next to the matte medium on the palette. And then I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna. And we're just going to... Kind of blend the two together, mostly raw sienna, tiny bit of burnt sienna, and then we mix that into the matte medium itself. So just get that nice and saturated. But again, we're going for a really light, light mixture. So you can see how thoroughly it gets mixed. Really want to mix that very, very lightly. A lot of matte medium into that mixture. Stir it around several times, fold it over like this. And then use your white card, test it out, see what you have. You should have something very light. This is too streaky, so I need to mix it some more. And add some more matte medium in here. Right, let's try this again. And I must have just a little bit of matte medium on the brush. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off quickly. I'm sorry, I had a little bit of uh, raw sienna on my brush. 
that was streaking into the mixture. So let's, uh, now with the rinsed off brush here, let's go ahead and go into this mixture again. And again, we're gonna really stir this nice. Let's test it now on the white card one more time. Okay, that looks better. You can see that here, our latest mixture. That's nice and light. So now we can apply this to her face. So the reason I chose raw sienna and burnt sienna is because I see that color represented here in the reference photo. Uh, she has more of an olive skin tone, and I think that'll work well but like i say you want to use about 75 percent raw sienna 25 percent burnt sienna and dilute it down to about 95 percent matte medium and five percent paint okay i want you to have really good results with this so i'd encourage you to just uh, follow that instruction and and go with the 95 percent matte medium to five percent pigment and test it out on your white card. Make sure that glaze is super light where you can just barely see the difference on that white card. Again, this is what I have here uh, for the white card. This is the mixture I'm going with on the top here, right there. Okay, so now with that, I'm gonna start in the upper left corner of her forehead, and I'm just gonna work my way out from there. And I just want to cover the whole thing. We're just getting a little color in here, a little difference here in the tones. It's okay if we go over the hair a little bit, that'll be all right. And in fact, I might actually bring this glaze into the hair a little bit. I'm, I'm going with diagonal strokes in both directions, keeping that wet edge, and then just going over really lightly at the end. Flip your brush over if you need to, to get the paint that's on the other side. You can also drag it kind of across like I'm doing here. Um, and that helps as well. And now we're gonna work into her um, neck area a little bit. And we're gonna cut up along the edge of her clothing. We don't want to get that all the way in there. Just cut up along the edge. You can go over everything all the way to the edge, over the shadows. You can go into the hair a little bit. That's okay too. We just would like to avoid going over her clothing. But even if you overlap over that, no big deal. Again, better to overlap than to underlap. It's much easier to correct the overlaps with opaque paint than to try to fix and blend in skin tones that you missed because you, you know, were reluctant to bring your glaze all the way to the edge. Um, now in the hair area, because there's some warmer tones here, I'm going to use this glaze for that as well. Um, I'm also going to, I'm going to apply this glaze within her hair to a certain point. Um, I'm not going to apply it on the top because I can detect in looking at the reference photo that the color is a little cooler right at the top. So I don't want to bring that all the way there. I'm going to leave off in that area because this warmer color of the raw sienna would kind of mess up that cooler tone that I want to go for on the top. You know, however this photograph is is taken, there's some different lighting. There's probably a cool light on the top and another light on her face. And we wanna show that difference there. That's gonna give the painting more depth. And we can add this glaze all the way down into her hair as well. And I'm just gonna continue brushing off camera all the way to the bottom part of her hair. It can overlap into the background just a bit. We're going to go yeah, all the way over on this whole section of her hair, but again, excluding that top part. So we just kind of leave off here gently, just go a little bit over that parted area on the top, and that's it. 
and that would do it for this layer here. Now, I'm going to also use this layer. I like to not waste paint, so if I have a glaze mixed, I want to see where else can I incorporate it on my portrait. And I do notice that there's that kind of greenish tone in the background. So let's do that. Let's use the same glaze for that, but let's add a little more raw sienna because you probably used up your glaze um, with this. And so let's add a little more matte medium and just use basically raw sienna. If a little burnt sienna is in there, no big deal, but let's just go with more of the raw sienna here. And then let's uh, let's go ahead and fill in the background more. Again, we have these cooler tones here in the shadowed areas. Let's do a glaze over the whole background and we'll get some warmer colors reiterated in there or uh, suggested in there. And then with that being played against the cooler tones, um, it's gonna set us up for a really, really excellent background with a lot of depth. I'm gonna start in the lower left corner lower left corner and just overlap over what I have. It should be dry. Make sure your previous glaze is dry before you do this. And we're just gonna apply a little bit of this color in there. Uh, make this glaze very, very light because we don't want to have this color overpower. We do need to have some contrast um, between her skin tones and the background. So make it very faint. This will probably be the only time I use this color for the background. I'll be switching to some other colors in future glazes. But having this in there will give us a little bit of integration of that skin tone color, which is always good. Okay, we're gonna add this glaze also to the other side. Again, make sure your previous glaze is completely dry before you add another glaze or you're gonna get blotchiness. So we're just going over this whole thing very quickly, very rapidly. Even though this is a very slow and methodical technique, sometimes when you apply the glazes, you do have to apply them pretty quickly. And that helps them to uh, not get blotchy. You don't want to overwork your glaze. Just uh, just a little bit here and a little bit there. Don't overbrush it. If it's starting to set up, if it's starting to get blotchy, leave it alone. And you can always remedy that in a future glaze. Okay, so the main point then was to go over the whole background. We painted over our um, kind of cooler bluish gray tones and now we're almost getting a greenish look to this and we're integrating some of the colors that we put into the uh, face into the whole painting but we will definitely establish some more contrast in future glazes all right so with that I think we're gonna call this lesson done uh, I wanted to show you the process here with the glazing technique and I think we accomplished that so, hey, I'm, I'm excited again that you're uh, following these steps with me and I am so looking forward to seeing your portraits develop. Please share them. Uh, share them in our Facebook group. When you sign up for the challenge, uh, I send you a link to our private Facebook group. You might already be a member because pe people that were a member of that group, I shared the challenge with them there. Uh, but whatever the case, um, participate in our Facebook group, share your portraits in progress leave encouraging comments for your fellow artists on their portraits because that really helps them to keep going and uh, as you give out in that way you'll also receive encouragement as well um, but again thank you so much for taking this challenge with me um, if you have any questions on the video lessons here you can get a hold of me by leaving comments below in this video uh, you can get a hold of me in the facebook group as much as possible i'm in there to try to field some questions um, and you can also uh, get a hold of me via email as well when you're signed up for this challenge. So go ahead and sign up at realisticacrylic.com. Uh, we'd love to have you take part. It's not too late and it is completely free. So um, yeah, love to have you be a part of it. 
Lastly, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel here, Fine Art by Matt Filio. Um, hit the bell icon so you get notified when we have new videos. And like this video if you found it helpful and share it with a friend. All right. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next lesson. We're going to just keep on adding glazes to this portrait and we're going to bring it to completion. All right. I'll see you there. God bless.